So far what I've got is a graphics abstraction API that hides away the specifics of which operating system you're on and lets you directly call to the API you're interested in, so OpenGL or D3D and so on. And while the structure of that is looking pretty good, the details, however, are pretty rough. So I want to take some time to go over all of those details, track down a lot of the to-dos I left inside all the implementation code, and start testing things out that I haven't tested very carefully yet, and try to get some things working at another sort of higher level up from where they're at right now. So that's what we're going to be going on today. Step one, I want to do a renaming pass over all of the code. So I did a structuring pass and renamed some files last time, but I didn't really decide on a naming scheme that would bind things together. I had a lot of things that were prefixed with OS, and that sort of implies it's a part of the OS layer, but I haven't actually organized this all under the OS layer. So I'm switching everything over to a GFX prefix, and then certain things are going to get sub prefixes. So we're going to have an OpenGL system and a D3D system, and they are going to get their own naming things and there are a lot of other places where I have little variables or globals that are not actually scoped correctly because they were copied from the example and I didn't bother to fix them at the time so I'm going to go through and fix as much of that as I can find and hopefully we'll end up with a feeling of a more consistent naming scheme at the end of this. Next up, I want to go over the init functions for the API layer, so the OpenGL init function and the D3D init function. And I want to make sure that they are handling the situation where an error occurs correctly. Something they haven't been doing so far is cleaning up any resources that they created. So if they opened up a module and were loading functions out of it, or if they created a context, you know, in the OpenGL case, they might create a bootstrap context or something. And I haven't double checked that those things are all getting cleaned up the right way. So that if you, for instance, ran the init function over and over again, it wouldn't cause a leak, right? The ideal situation is that if it succeeds, the resources then stay open, but it does not redo the init work on the next call. And if it fails, then even though it didn't successfully init, it will clean up all those resources. So the next time you call it, it won't already have half those resources opened already somewhere in a lost handle. Now I want to take a quick moment to speak about the style I am using to handle all of this. So I'm not using C++ style RAII, and I'm also not doing anything clever here like creating linked lists that I can chain these resources onto and free them. And I'm going to discuss a little bit about why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it, because it might be somewhat unusual looking if you haven't seen it done this way before. So the first thing is I'm creating a special block. Remember, the way I ended up organizing all of this code is into sort of strictly separated blocks where each block has an if error has not occurred condition at the beginning. So if an error occurs, we skip through all of the main blocks and get to the end of the function. Then at the end of the function, we have an if an error has occurred condition, and underneath that we clean up the resources that would have been left around if there wasn't an error. So to clarify that idea, if there is no error, these resources stay open. If there is an error at the end, then we want to clean these resources up because there's no point in holding on to them if we didn't successfully initialize the system. There are also cases where there are resources we created that were temporaries that we always want to throw away whether or not there was an error. So those will also be separate blocks and they just won't have a condition on that block. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating separate blocks where each block is unified with all of all the code in that block is unified together by the fact that it's sort of implementing the same kind of conceptual thing and they all have the same condition about when they occur so within one of these blocks what i then do is i check each handle explicitly and free it so i'm saying if this handle appears to have been initialized please clear it then so if i have some error halfway through some of my handles will still be null and so they won't need to be released, but the ones that aren't null anymore, the ones that have some value, those are the ones I need to release. And while I'm at it, I also need to zero out any function pointers that I set and clear out the handle values back to zero for any globals that I changed, right? So that's the way this is all working. Now let me justify that a little bit. First of all, why am I not using RAII? So the first thing I need to do here is explain quickly what RAII actually is. So resource acquisition is initialization is what the acronym means, but what I'm going to simplify it all the way down to just saying use destructors to clean things up. So if you use destructors to clean things up, what you do is you write a class so that when you put it into a scope, at the end of that scope, all of the destructors run implicitly. So the idea here is if you have something like a handle that 
you need to release somehow, then you put it into one of these classes and at the end of the scope, it's cleaned up without you having to write any of the code. You just write the function that implements the destructor and at the end of the scope where you place that class, it will automatically happen. Now this actually creates a lot of problems if I try to use it. For one thing, I now have to write a whole class for every type of thing I want to release. Whereas if I don't do it in the style I'm currently using, I can just write the code that does the release in line. It's about the same number of lines of code with an extra if for each resource in my style uh, and an extra class for each res resource type in the RAII style or the use a destructor to release things style. Another issue it creates is you have to statically commit to doing things. Ultimately, what I need is I need this if because sometimes my handles are going to be allocated and sometimes they're not. Now you might think, okay, if you hadn't done everything around this weird error chain thing where there are blocks and you skip over all the blocks once the first error happens, then you could have sort of nested each resource that you acquire in a separate nest and will only reach the statically forced release point after you've successfully created the thing. But that makes the code a whole lot e harder to like actually write the error handling parts. Uh, and it has the additional downside that the actual API for that is still not trivial. You have to go to the low level thing, try to do a thing and then check for success. And then on success, you create the class that will ultimately free that thing at the end of the scope. And of course it has the additional downside that if you have several layers of things, you know, if there are three or four handles, uh, then you end up needing to create three or four levels of nesting. And so the code does not read as a nice flat series of steps, but as this very intricate sort of system of conditionals at the deepest point, you have like three or four conditions all operating on the block of code that you're trying to parse visually at that point. And I just don't like that style. I don't see that it actually is more readable that way. It seems more readable to me to keep it flat and do this sort of chaining thing. And the benefit of that readability outweighs the extra runtime cost of doing this if thing, which you actually end up having to do the if runtime cost anyways, just at a different place. It also complicates one other thing, which is that RAII would mean that when I have certain things that I always want to release and other things that I only want to release if I fail, I then have to, on success, go and mark all those things because I can't in any way take the destructor out. The destructor is going to happen one way or another. So I, instead of not running the destructor at all, I have to mark the object as please don't destroy this thing when you get to the destructor that I cannot remove which is like extra silly work. Instead of just doing the minimal amount of work or the instead of doing the work that makes sense to do, I am already agreeing to do this destroy no matter what, even when I don't want to do it. And then when I don't want to do it, I do even more work to not do the destroy. It's kind of silly. Another way I could do this is with a sort of runtime chain, sort of like kind of like what I do with the arenas actually, which is create a handle that builds up the list of all the things that need to be released and then release them in a batch. And I would actually love to do it this way. I'm going to struggle throughout this entire process with the desire to go build something like that. But it leads to a few issues. Like I was saying in the RAII case, I still would need to write a separate releaser sort of function pointer thing for each type of thing I want to put on the chain. And while I do think APIs should be written in this way where you have sort of one custodian handle and whenever you create a resource that you're going to need to be able to free later, you put it onto a custodian and then you just say, hey, I'm done with this entire set of things. I, all the things that were opened up on this custodian can now be released in one line. That's the way everything should be written. But when the low level APIs have lots of different handle types and you want to like sometimes clear out global variables to zero and function pointers to zero that aren't tied to the custodian in any way and you end up having to sort of jerry-rig all of it and so it's just a lot more machinery code that would have complicated things in order to save like five or six lines at the end of these functions with where there's a block and the be other benefit it has is as things move around over time you would avoid mistakes more easily but you only really get that benefit if the apis take the custodian as a parameter and all of these low level apis like i said weren't implemented around this idea so i would be taking the low level api and wrapping every api i ever want to call in order to really get that part of the benefit 
So I just think in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Just test it every time you modify one of these functions to make sure that you're not leaking things or test it occasionally to make sure you're not leaking things. And otherwise hand maintain this block that describes the resources that need to be released under different conditions. That's the style I'm going with. It's very explicit, it's very raw. It puts a little bit more work on you up front, but it actually keeps the code so darn simple that I just think it's gotta be the way to go. Next up, I need to deal with a lot of crufty code that has developed in the equip window functions and related functions, where the graphics API specific stuff needs to do something to a particular window. In particular, the cruft is that there's just a little bit of low level detail that is getting duplicated in each of the graphics API specific layers that could really be wrapped up with some helpers in the graphics API independent layer. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I need a function that says whether or not a given handle is valid a function that says whether or not a given handle already has a graphic system equipped to, to it, and a function for setting the equipment of a, a particular window handle. That way, all that specific stuff can happen through these functions, and the things that used to be two or three lines that get copied into both layers become just the one call to that little helper function. Separately, I also need a helper function for re taking a window handle and reaching into the operating system specific stuff and pulling out operating sp system specific data. So in the case of Win32, I, for instance, need the HWND, the, the handle to the window that the operating system creates, and that's stored inside of a struct that is hidden from the operating system abstraction layer. But when I'm implementing the Win32 OpenGL stuff, I'm already dealing with an assumption that I'm on the Win32 layer. So I might as well have permission to reach into the Win32 specific stuff for graphics. Same thing for the D3D layer. I might as well be allowed to reach into the Win32 specific layer in order to get those low level details about the operating system window handle. That way I can operate on the low level details and do things like create the OpenGL context or create the swap chain that I need to create. So I'm gonna work on that stuff in this segment. Next up, I want to do more work on making sure I'm cleaning up resources, but this time on the equip functions. So the equip functions can fail just like the init functions can, and when they do, there might be some dangling resources that were sort of created, but that are no longer going to be needed because they're only needed on success. And so I need to just apply the same logic. We're going to do the same style. At the end of the equip function, if an error occurred, I will clear out all of the resources that were created along the way that didn't end up being needed because of the error. And there's not a whole lot to say about that because we've already been over it in pretty big detail. So I'm just doing that part here and then testing it out, making sure I don't have a leak. Thank you. 
So doing that window equipment resource re, uh, management stuff worked out perfectly well for the OpenGL layer, but in the D3D layer, I ended up with a leak. And in fact, it was such a terrible leak that in just a few moments of watching the program looping and the memory number going up, I crashed my entire computer, which was kind of crazy. Or I don't know if I crashed the entire computer, but the display just completely stopped working. I couldn't see anything. I had a full shut down hard with the power button on the machine, you know, not great. So I came back, was a little more careful not to let it run for too long when I was testing for leaks and tried for a while to figure out why I was getting a leak. And I was able to narrow it down to the fact that whenever I allocated the swap chain for a window and then called the release method on the swap chain, it didn't actually release the memory, but I couldn't figure out why. So I spent this entire section here trying to figure that out and eventually giving up and just running a giant to do to like be careful about this and figure it out later. So all of this is looking really good. What I have so far is I can put both the OpenGL and D3D layers together into one compilation now. I no longer need to switch between them. And I can create multiple windows. I can equip each window with a different renderer if I want, or I can equip them with the same renderer if I want. But what I can't do is I can't destroy windows. So I will be basically at the point where I consider the code base fully supporting multi-window when I can destroy windows. And since we're so close, I figure now is a good time to do it. So I go in there and I implement destroy window here. It does raise one slightly interesting issue, which is that each graphics API wants to clean up its equipment in a different way. So if I equip a window with OpenGL, it needs to destroy a context, whereas if I equip it with D3D, it needs to release a swap chain, which we don't know how to actually make that work, and it also needs to release a few other details. So once we know how to make the D3D release stuff work, we can actually do it right, but we know it'll need to be different than the OpenGL case. So I need some kind of way that when I equip something, or equip a window with a renderer, I can also equip it with the knowledge of how to clean up the details that were equipped. And I just decided to do this in the most straightforward way possible, nothing fancy. You just throw a function pointer in there. So when you go to equip a window with the renderer, you also put in a function pointer that is called on the destroy of that window to release the graphics layers details. And with that, we have a code base with multi-render, multi-window support. And we'll need to go back and figure out what to do with that D3D bug next. See you guys then. Mm -hmm.